invitation for you. Let's celebrate Thanksgiving together. I hope that sounds good to you because part of the responsibility of Austin Faith Dialogue through the Austin Metropolitan Ministries is to invite members of this community to grow in relationship with one another. Today, on this program of Austin Faith Dialogue, we're going to talk about Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving worship and how we grow together in affirming one another in the community we know and in which we live here in Austin. Stay with us on Austin Faith Dialogue. This is Austin Faith Dialogue, a public affairs program discussing the important crossroad of religion in life, produced by Austin Metropolitan Ministries in cooperation with KTBC-TV. Austin Faith Dialogue highlights the interaction of the religious community with the social and cultural issues throughout our area. Now, today's edition of Austin Faith Dialogue. I hope it's for you like it is for me that Thanksgiving is one of our favorite events in our family. And today on Austin Faith Dialogue, we're going to talk about what does it mean to be a part of a Thanksgiving community. Within the Austin community, we have a, a worship service that is sponsored by Austin Metropolitan Ministries. We want to invite you to be a part of that worship service to be held on November 21st. And we have some people who are going to talk to you about their traditions of Thanksgiving. Ed Selig is a member of Congregation Aguda Sakiam, and Ed has been a participant in the group community service for a number of years. And Steve Tomka is a native of Romania. And he's going to talk to us about what he knows and experiencing as an immigrant to this country and sharing the Thanksgiving customs. Ed and Steve, we're glad to have you on Austin Faith Dialogue, and I thank you a lot for giving us your time. Uh, Ed, you have an interesting story. Um, tell us about your dad and how you all happened to find your way to Austin, Texas. Well, my father was born and raised in Germany and came to the United States after World War II, after he served for five years in the Russian army against the Germans. And after World War II, he arrived in the United States and settled in El Paso, Texas. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was born and raised in El Paso and went to school here at the university and eventually settled here with my wife and we have our children here in Austin, Texas. And decided to make Austin your home. Yes. Thanksgiving is a part of your life, I think, for your father to come in the late 40s to this country. Uh, probably a very thankful type of experience for him. Yes, he left Germany because of the persecution and came to the United States for the freedom that he was able to experience here. And we've been able to reap the benefits of that. Uh, that might be part of the theme that we want to hold up on this Thanksgiving program for Austin Faith Dialogue is that whole idea of freedom. That if we're going to have on the, on the service for this year is going to be world ethic, we need to talk in terms about freedom. Uh, Steve, you also have an interesting experience. You were uh, born in Romania. Yes, I was born in Romania uh, in 1957. And my father, um, uh, our, our sort of history in a way starts from my, my father and his brother uh, separating during 1956 and during the Hungarian Revolution and at that time his brother came to the US and my father went to Romania to get away from the hardship and um, in 1970 my dad decided to come out and visit his father uh, or his brother that lived, lived in San Francisco at the time and so they uh, reunited and once my dad was out here he decided that their you know, life was so much better than it was in Romania and there was so much freedom and potential that he decided to stay and then uh, with some uh, hardships uh, we made it through the next three years the remainder of the family that stayed in Romania and we finally uh, joined him in 1974 late in the fall. Hungary, Romania, All the United States. What an interesting story that is and you picked up another theme for a world ethic if you will not only Ed mentioned about freedom but you mentioned mm -hmm. about potential that your dad when he came to this country noticed that there was potential. Thanksgiving as we know it in the United States and Thanksgiving as we celebrate it here in, in Austin is uh, very much of a cultural experience that we have in, in this society. Ed, you have family. You have two children, is that correct? Yes. What are their ages? Abe is 11 and Ilana is 9. Abe and Ilana, pretty yes. names. Yes. Now, those names are important because they reflect you and your faith community and where you are. How do yes. you go about sharing the Thanksgiving spirit in this culture with, with your family? Well, we get together as a family and for our family not just here in Austin but also in Houston and we get together. That's a, a, a 
a way for us all to get together once a year at least and share a meal. And to share some of the traditions that your father brought with from Germany and Russia and brought over here. Right, and also just as a focal point for us all to get together. It's uh -huh. a way for us to at least share something at least once a year together. How does it happen that um, in your congregation, you were invited to be a part of the service that we have through Austin Metropolitan Ministry, and you said we've been doing this for half a dozen years now. Yes. Even, you've been doing your part for four or five years, you said. Right, at least. And what I do for the, at this particular event is I'm able to help bring a, a call to a service by blowing the shofar, which is a ram's horn. And the, when you blow the ram's horn, it's a way of calling everybody's attention. It uh, was, I want to make sure that the Austin Faith Dialogue people can uh, see this. So maybe we can have the camera come up on that so that they can see it. The name of it again is? It's a shofar, and it's a ram's horn. And it is, has its symbolism in the Bible in which Abraham was going to sacrifice his son Isaac. Mm -hmm. And at that time, God said, no, don't sacrifice your son as a, show, as a way of showing your love for me. Sacrifice this ram over here in the bushes. And so Abraham sacrificed the, lamb, the ram. And so this is a way of showing our love for God and our respect for God. You mentioned before we started the program that every time um, you participate in a service, and, and you do this not only at the uh, community-wide service for Austin Metropolitan Ministries, you do this right. in your home congregation. Right, right? At, at Congregation of Gudas Achim on Rosh Hashanah, which is our new year, and on Yom Kippur, I also blow the shofar then. It's a way for us to herald everyone together and a call to worship and to know that the year is beginning again. And this year, you'll blow it at the community service and call people to worship yes. and remind them. You used a very important word, at least it's a word that I think is, is maybe a key word in our vocabulary, relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, Thanksgiving is a time your family comes together and there's a relationship as you gather around the food and the bounty that you have and the sure. fellowship. But this, spell it for me. How do you it's spell it? S -H -O -F -A -R, S-H-O-F-A-R, shofar. Shofar. The right. shofar calls people to to worship or it heralds their attention and, and a it, relationship they have with god right and so when you hear it you definitely know it well we want to hear it okay that's what we want to do we, sure we want to make sure that we can hear it so the the shofar is going to be blown on austin faith dialogue today but let's hold it just for a second okay, okay? Sure. we'll come back to it because we want to entice folks to continue to watch okay. the program and, and say they're going to hear a shofar that's great all right Steve, um, what about you? You have a daughter, Sarah, a, a wonderful family. What about Ed has shared some of the things that they do in their family life to, to bring out the uh, Thanksgiving theme. How about for you, and what, how do you do that? You're Romanian, your wife, is she uh, from uh, another country? Uh, is she a no, my, my wife uh, was born in New York City, actually, so she's a Yankee, and uh, <laughs> we met uh, in graduate school here in Austin, as a matter of fact. Uh, but as uh, one thing that, that, that was different about our culture in Romania was that we really did not uh, celebrate a particular Thanksgiving Day. There was no such thing. I think it seems to be uniquely um, American in mm -hmm. that sense. But uh, we quickly found out the meaning of it or, or the importance of it um, soon after we came over from Romania because at the time, uh, in September of 74, uh, we had not seen our father for three, three years. We did not know whether we would even make it out to this country. Um, the Romanian government, for instance, to make it more difficult on us, uh, decided to uh, allow only two, uh, two at a time of our family from Romania to immigrate, uh, two weeks apart from each other. And so every time, uh, for instance, early on when my brother, my middle brother left, we were not sure whether we would ever see him again. Then two weeks later, my mom and I uh, came to the States, um, and we left my older brother behind, and we were not sure whether we were going to see him and his family. Mm -hmm. uh, and so finally, after four years of hardship, uh, having reunited everybody in the late fall of uh, 74, it, it, it was just such a almost a divine planning, in a sense, to, to have happened right around Thanksgiving that it, 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 it made it much more obvious to us what it was all about. Um, you know, and so so now that that you know the kids have finally split and they're they're they've formed their own family, um, you know we're, we're sort of building up on that tradition again. You know, uh, my wife being a New Yorker, um, you know we're we're sort of reestablishing our own own unit. And, and do you do you think that as a person who is an immigrant, mm -hmm. that you can tell that story like Ed can tell the story of grandfather, Selig? Can we tell that story of, of unity 
Uh, if we're going to talk at this Thanksgiving service here in Austin, community-wide, we're going to talk about freedom, all right? We're thankful for freedom, right? We're, we're thankful for what potential of our land, the bounty of our land, but also that whole sense of, of cultural unity. Mm -hmm. And that one of the things that's important to me sitting here with you on this program of Austin Faith Dialogue is that you come from different backgrounds, and yet together you can have experience of unity. Can you tell your children that? And, and how do you go about sharing that with your children, that there is a, there is a unity that can be, can be participated in in this land? Well, when we attend the service in past years, we've been able to recognize that there are differences. When we go to other congregations, we're able to see how other congregations operate. And through that education, we're able to develop a respect for other religions and other cultures. Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, unity um, is built upon some sort of a solidarity. Mm -hmm. And that if our children are going to learn that cultural unity through Thanksgiving or or the big goal this Thanksgiving is world ethic if they're gonna learn that world ethic we, we must look at that differences we have and then try to find a sense of unity mm -hmm. to be thankful about in the midst of that huh and it's through respect of the other cultures and it's the only way you can do that is by sharing and understanding differences and building upon those differences so that you can have a common respect for one another all right Ed, this thanksgiving i'm thankful that we've had an opportunity to get to know one another i've watched yes. you at these services but i never have sat down and talked to you before yes. what will you want to share this thanksgiving as you gather with your family your children um, friends what are you going to hold up uh, will you tell them again the story of your of grandfather? What will you do to... Well, and also to thank, be thankful for the health that we have and, and the freedoms that we have here and mm -hmm. that potentially our, our past generations didn't have and what we should look forward to in the future. Mm -hmm. And maybe tell them a story about Steve Tomka, <laughs> the guy that you met Absolutely. at Austin Bay Dialogue. Absolutely. And in that process, see how we are, we are woven together. Mm -hmm. Steve, you're a Ph.D. candidate, University of Texas, anthropology sure. degree. Uh, you had an experience in South America that is, I think, adds to this whole flavor of Thanksgiving, that mm -hmm. if we remember that Thanksgiving in the United States is a uniquely cultural event that is focused on a day, mm -hmm. but you had an experience where Thanksgiving was more than a day. Could you tell our viewing audience about that? Well, I had the fortune uh, between 1984 and 89 uh, to travel to South America and, and Bol Bolivia in the highlands and do my PhD work funded by a number of institutions. Uh, and what, what was interesting was that, again, uh, uh, as Romania to some extent, they do not have a, a particular Thanksgiving Day celebration. But uh, what was uh, obvious to me was that, um, you know, having, having been a transplanted Romanian in a sense and then have, having over the years Americanized myself enough to, to uh, consider myself an American, um, then traveling to Bolivia where, uh, and living with, in a village and, and with a group of people that, that you know, probably were, are in probably one of the more desolate areas of the world, uh, there still is a, is a beauty and an inner happiness and, and sort of a spi spiritual, you know, having gotten a togetherness that, that you know, seems to, to be shared by everybody. You know whether whether you're a, a Bolivian herder or whether you're you know a businessman in the states or or you know you, you're from Romania or any other country in the world. There's a, there's a there's a sense of you know something underlying that's common to all of us, and and that you know they were able to be happy um, just as much as we are here. You know, uh, having taken all the material things away, which they do not have there, they still express a joy of, of for life and, and happiness that, that I think is, is the basis of everything. That's you, you know what I'd like to do, Steve? I'd like you to stay for the second half of the program. We're going to let Ed go. But we, we really want you to stay and talk okay. a little bit more about that because I think it's that theme that we're trying to hold up on the community-wide Thanksgiving service, that we are indeed a world community and that somehow for our kids for future generations that we can hold up the freedoms the mm -hmm. unity mm -hmm. the potential right. that we all have right. and that which kind of binds us all together yeah. our traditions mm -hmm. learning to respect them right. and to affirm them now the service is at central presbyterian this year yes. in the year of 1993 right yes. central presbyterian it's at three o'clock november 21st right. And Ed Selig, you're going to be there, and you're going to blow that horn. I'm going to be there, yes. And and uh, by the grace of God, for all of us, all right. And I'm going to say, 
Ed's calling us to worship and reminding us of a relationship. As we uh, conclude this portion of Austin Faith Dialogue, and I'm going to invite the viewing audience to stay with us because we want them to, to see the rest of the guests that we have with us. Listen now as Ed Selig calls you to worship to the community-wide Thanksgiving service at Central Presbyterian on November 21st at 3 p.m. Ed, please. Okay. Wonderful. We'll come back to Austin Faith Dialogue. Thank you. Serving Austin means serving you. Each day, Austin Metropolitan Ministries is religion in action, providing affordable housing, caring for the elderly, marching against hunger, and much more. AMM promotes understanding, cooperation, and social involvement. So when we ask for your help, we're really asking to help you, Austin. To find out how you can help Austin Metropolitan Ministries help Austin through its member organizations, just call 472-7627. Thanksgiving edition of Austin Faith Dialogue. We've been giving you an invitation, an invitation to attend the community-wide sponsored by AMM Thanksgiving service to be held at Central Presbyterian on November 21st at 3 p.m. And the theme for that worship service is world ethic. And so to talk about Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving traditions and how it all fits together in the world community, we've invited uh, three individuals for this part of the program who come from a variety of places throughout the world community. I'd like you viewers of Austin Faith Dialogue to meet Joseph Candy. Joseph's a native of Sierra Leone. And then I'd like you to meet Margareta Smith, who uh, grew up and is a native of Sweden. And then Steve Tomka. And Steve was with us on the first part of the program. And he is from Romania. Actually, his roots, Steve, were in Hungary. and. Before we took the break and Ed uh, went on to his other responsibilities so that Margareta and Joseph could join us, he uh, blew that shofar. And that was kind of exciting to hear that shofar. <laughs> that calls people to worship and reminds people of their relationship with God. I'd like to think that maybe Thanksgiving, as we celebrate and observe it in this culture, is a, is a, sh a corporate shofar, a way of calling people to a relationship with God and being aware of the blessings of God. You were talking about your experience in Bolivia, and maybe we could pick up there a little bit before we talk to Margaret and Joseph. Um, the community there, you mentioned there was a, uh, an established congregation or a church building. Talk a little bit about that. Uh, the community had a church built uh, by, I think, development agency of some sort back in the 1960s. And uh, although the uh, priest that serves uh, that congregation comes around maybe once a year, um, either at Christmas or Easter, uh, depending on how the rotation for the region works. Um, the people open the church themselves every morning and join in services uh, by themselves. And uh, on Sundays in particular, the church is always full. So they, you know, without any overseeing of, of, of any sort, there is, uh, there is that faith, there is that desire to participate and be part of it. Uh, Did you sense when you were there, you're an anthropologist and working on that doctorate at UT in anthropology, uh, do you sense the people had a, a contentment, a peace, a, a spirit of thanksgiving about them? Certainly do, and that's what's interesting is, uh, to me, uh, when I first joined the community in 1984, it was difficult to, um, to understand how come people living in such a desolate area um, could still feel happy and, and, and feel spiritually free. And, and after I lived there for a while, and I spent all together about a year, I realized um, you know, that you, you can be happy wherever you are. It's not a matter of um, having your life planned out or having um, material goods or having a car to drive to work or any such thing, but, but you know, in some sense, happiness is a lot closer to home 
you know, and it certainly is in their case, and, and they're... You know, what I'd like to suggest to you, Steve, for you to put into your anthropology mind is that there needs, there's a spiritual dimension that seems to be a part of all people, mm -hmm. whether we're talking to Ed about his father coming from Germany, uh, fighting the Russian army in the Second World War, and then coming over here and settling and immigrating, or for you, from Romania. There seems to be that, that sense of wanting the same thing mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. wanting for our children to have those same types of mm -hmm. qualities of life in it. In May, the American holiday of Thanksgiving is focused so much on the bounty and the blessings mm -hmm. that we have. Mm -hmm. But maybe one of the weaknesses of that is that we focus on Thanksgiving as a one-day event. Mm -hmm. And when President Lincoln declared it as a national holiday, uh, it was a sense of being grateful for the bounty of life. Mm -hmm. But we learn from people around the world. And I like that theme for this year's community Thanksgiving service, world ethic, that there are factors that draw us together so there can be a mm -hmm. corporate Thanksgiving. Margareta... Welcome to Awesome Faith Dialogue. Uh, Thank knowing you. you and you've been my friend for many years and <clears throat> I'm really pleased to have you on the program. Thank you're you. you're wearing a Swedish outfit that I asked you to wear and I thank you for doing that. When we talked before the program about your native land of Sweden, uh, you said there was no definite Thanksgiving day like we have in the United States? No, no. That is just that's American. That's a very know. American experience. Yeah. Uh, what how do the people of uh, Sverige of of Sweden, how do they go about uh, sensing, like Steve mentioned, the people in uh, South America, that, that spirit of thanksgiving. Well, uh, in the fall, uh, after the harvest, I mean, every, every little community or place has a big, you know, festival, you know. Uh -huh. And th that's... Uh, Connected uh, that, with the harvest, the bringing yeah. of the crops. Yes, and, yes. And what would they do when they have their harvest festival or their Thanksgiving? How would it be? Would it be centered in the church, the local congregation? Would it be centered in the family? Would it be a community-wide celebration? No, How is it done? Big uh, community mm -hmm. celebration in uh, what we call a, a folk park, kind of, you know, a big folk park, uh, park, a people's park. Yeah, a people's park, uh -huh. you know, and uh, and uh, with all the. Um, you know, you know, neat things, a handicraft, you know, a soul, and then all the food, and then a lot of folk dancing, <laughs> and that's, and folk music, Sounds and wonderful. fiddlers, and... But it gets cold in Sweden early, so it's got to yes. be in, what, September or something yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, August, September. Uh-huh, yeah. when, when the crops have come yes. in. Yes. And so they, they celebrate Thanksgiving and the bounty mm -hmm. of the crop in mm -hmm. Sweden by... Uh, would people wear uh, a dress like oh, you're wearing? Oh, uh, everybody, it's getting more and more popular. Uh huh. So, um, have you been back to Sweden recently? When was the last? Oh, it's four years. Uh huh. And and is it true that more of the people who live in Sweden are kind of gravitating more towards this kind of uh, dress? dress. And, uh, yes. Uh, well, it's it's become very popular. When I grew up, uh, it was just some for some people, out, old people out in the country, mm -hmm. you know, who kept it. But now uh, it seems like you're uh, really coming along. Margaret, when you came to the United States and became a part of this culture, and, and you ran into this day called Thanksgiving Day, uh, you've raised two children, uh, you and Ted have family life. What, what kind of traditions did you put into your, your cultural experience of Thanksgiving? Did you do the traditional American type thing? Oh, absolutely. You know, when you come to America, you do as the Americans do. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so, uh, and, and uh, we had the best turkey, always the best stuffing. <laughs> did, did you put any Swedish traditions along with it, or did you make it pure uh, Americana? No, I think uh, pure Americana. Uh -huh. I think it was uh, important for the kids, otherwise uh, maybe they didn't know where they were. Were they in Sweden or England or yeah. America? Ted's roots being in England, right? Yes. And you want to hold up that they're American. And, mm -hmm. and maybe that's another part of this whole idea of world ethic is that this Thanksgiving festival helps us realize we're mm -hmm. Americans. Because yeah. Steve said the same thing about being from Romania, that yeah. he and his family, they really focus on the Americana element. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Joseph, you come to us from Sierra Leone. Uh, welcome to Austin Faith Dialogue. Talk to us a little bit, of Joseph, about... Um, well, first of all, let's talk about what you're wearing there. Is that a native uh, shirt that you uh, have? This is a native dress worn by the men for the rest of the year as we have a temperature of 80 degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year. We we'll have six months of continuous rain season, six months of dry season. Mm -hmm. And so they, the men wear that uh, yeah, much of the year? The men wear it because of the weather. It's more easy to wear and we have frequent air going through and out. 
We, I've never been to Sierra Leone. Someday maybe you'll take me there, Joseph. Hopefully, Does that yeah. sound like a good idea? Huh? Hopefully I'm working And on then that. you can show me around. But talk to me about the Thanksgiving spirit in a place like Sierra Leone. How, how was uh, Sierra Leone, how did it come into existence? Uh, Sierra Leone was founded by Pedro da Sintra, a Portuguese sailor who founded Sierra Leone in 1462. 1462? 1462. Uh -huh. He named it Sierra Leone because of the lions and the mountains that are found in the country. I see. Okay. And then what about the capital? You told me it's Freetown, is that right? Yeah, Freetown is the capital city. It was founded as a settlement in 1787 by the British government for the free slaves that decided to go back to West Africa. See, I think, Steve, Margareta, that's a very interesting point that sure. Freetown, the capital, was established to allow those who were slaves to return mm -hmm. to Africa, Africa and to celebrate freedom. And freedom. we talked about the world ethic for which we're thankful is to be free. Uh, how about Thanksgiving celebration in Sierra Leone, Joseph? Well, Thanksgiving in Sierra Leone comes at the end of November which is the end of harvest season in Sierra Leone. Crops are gathered, some are taken to church for prayer, some are taken to mocks for services, for blessing from God. Then they are distributed among families. Mm. You know, Austin Faith okay. Dialogue is sponsored by AMM, and this is an interfaith organization, as you know. How about the faith communities in Sierra Leone? What faith groups do you have there? Well, we have a faith organization. We have the Jewish church. We have the Christians who have the Muslims. And so when the people would bring in their crops, their harvest in Sierra Leone, they would maybe bring them to the mosque, to for the instance? Mosque, or to the synagogue? To the synagogue. Or to or the to church? To the church for the pastor to pray on it so that they can distribute a sort of a blessing to God, for saying thanks to God for giving them the crop for the year. Okay, thanksgiving for the harvest, for the food to eat for the year. Yes. Joseph, uh, you have come to the United States. You brought your family, although you have two sons, still over in Sierra Leone. Tell me about Thanksgiving for you coming to this country. Well, Thanksgiving for me in America is almost similar to what we do back home because of my Christian background. And that Thanksgiving back home is a little different because at the end of the sac sacrifices during the day in the evening, the elders will come around and tell us the background of the family history. It's interesting. See, I think there is a connection that we have. And as we celebrate this Thanksgiving together, and as we invite people of the viewing audience of this program to come to the all-community service at Central Presbyterian, I hope that we can remember that it is a world ethic that holds us together, and that Thanksgiving is a part of that. I want to thank you, Joseph Candy, for being thank a part of this program. Much, and sir. I do hope we get to Sierra Leone someday, and that we can be thankful there. And Margareta Smith, Thank you for sharing your traditions from Sweden, and we're thankful for you and Ted and the family. And Steve Tonka, thank you for being with us also, and God bless you and your family. And to all of you, thanks for watching Austin Faith Dialogue. A blessed Thanksgiving be to all of you.